Dear students, today we will go through some basic concepts and terms in thermodynamics. The term thermodynamics will be familiar to all of you because you might be hearing it from your high school or high secondary classes. So what is thermodynamics? It is the study of energy that accompanies chemical or physical changes. That is, it deals with all types of energy transformations that accompany physical and chemical processes. The thermodynamics is only concerned with macroscopic changes. Macroscopic means large scale, macroscopic changes and observations. The word thermodynamics was derived from the Greek words thermae meaning heat and dynamics meaning force. We study thermodynamics in both physics and chemistry. If you look at it from the chemistry point of view, then we call it chemical thermodynamics. Now let's see some common terms used in thermodynamics. The first one is system. System is the subject of investigation. That is the part which we choose to study. For example, if you have taken some solution in a beaker and we have to study the properties of the solution, then the solution in, inside the beaker will form the system. So it is the subject of the investigation or the part that we choose to study. Boundary is a closed surface surrounding the system through which energy and mass may enter or leave the system. So here the solution inside a beaker, the walls of the beaker forms the boundary. And finally everything external to the system forms the surroundings. So we have three terms. One is the system, which is the subject of our investigation. The closed surface surrounding the system will form the boundary through which mass and energy may enter or leave the system. And everything external to the system forms the surroundings. System plus surroundings will constitute the universe. Next is different types of system in thermodynamics. Broadly, they are classified into three types, open system, closed system, and isolated system. An open system is the one which can exchange both matter and energy. A simple example is uh, boiling water in an open saucepan or an open beaker. If the saucepan is open, then water can get outside it, that is matter can go out. It can also exchange energy, that is heat energy with the surroundings. So this is an example for an open system. So an open system means the system which can exchange matter as well as energy with the surroundings. Next is the closed system. Closed system means the system which can exchange only energy but not matter. In this picture, you can see the saucepan is covered with a lid. So, if we cover it with a lid, then matter does not go in or out, but energy can be exchanged with the surroundings. So, this is an example for a closed system, a system which can exchange energy but not matter. And the last one is the isolated system. This is a system which cannot exchange matter as well as energy. If we prepare a hot tea or a hot water and if we keep it in a thermos flask, then we know that the matter will not go in or out. The energy also cannot be exchanged with the surroundings. And we know that the water will remain hot for so many hours, right? That means it is an isolated system which cannot exchange matter as well as energy. So these are the three types of systems that we that we see in thermodynamics. An open system which can exchange matter as well as energy. Closed system which can exchange only energy but not matter. And isolated system 
which cannot exchange matter as well as energy. Next is about thermodynamic properties. Thermodynamic properties are the physical characteristics which are experimentally measurable and it helps to define a system. Experimentally measurable means that will be properties like pressure, volume, temperature, density, etc. So these are the properties which define a system and such properties are called thermodynamic properties. Since thermodynamics is the study of bulk behavior of the system or bulk behavior of the matter, the thermodynamic properties are also called macroscopic properties. So macroscopic properties are the properties associated with the collective behavior or the bulk behavior of the particles in a macroscopic system. The examples are pressure, volume, temperature, density, viscosity, etc. Thermodynamic properties are again classified into two types, intensive properties and extensive properties. Now let's see what are intensive and extensive properties. Intensive properties means the properties that do not depend upon the quantity or size of matter present in the system. Intensive properties are independent of the quantity or size of matter present in the system. Examples include color, order, melting point, boiling point, density, pressure, conductivity, etc. So these properties do not depend upon the quantity or size of matter. So such properties are called intensive properties. And the second category is the extensive properties. Extensive properties are those which depend upon the quantity or size of matter present in the system. For example, mass, volume, etc. We know that mass or volume will change according to the quantity or size of matter. right? So, such properties are called extensive properties which depend upon the quantity or size of matter present in the system. Now let's see some more characteristics of intensive and extensive properties. Intensive properties are not additive because they do not depend upon the quantity of matter and they are not additive. Whereas extensive properties like mass, volume, etc. they are additive properties. Also the ratio of two extensive properties will yield an intensive property. For example, we know that density is equal to mass by volume. Mass is an extensive property, volume is also an extensive property. But mass by volume is density and that becomes an intensive property. We know that density will not change according to variation in the quantity or size of matter. It is a constant, right? So density which depends only on mass and volume is an intensive property. That is the ratio of two extensive properties will yield an intensive property. So we have seen what is system, surroundings, different types of systems and about thermodynamic properties. So thermodynamics is a set of tools that describes the macroscopic properties of equilibrium systems. It is a purely empirical science. Thermodynamics is primarily based upon four fundamental generalizations called the zeroth law, first law, second law and third laws of thermodynamics. And these laws are not derived from any fundamental concepts. They are assumed universal principles based purely on natural human observations and experience on the behavior of bulk matter. Zeroth law defines about temperature. First law defines energy. Second law is about heat transformations and it defines entropy. And third law provides a numerical value to entropy. We will learn about these laws in detail in the coming classes. Thank you.